We are officially one month away from the NBA trade deadline. And today we got a bomb from Wendy that could potentially reveal some plans. Also, Nick Nurse made a quote that has me positive and fired up. We'll break it all down here on Philly Take with RB. Perfect. What is up, everybody? Or be here. Welcome into the show. Hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell. Don't miss any of the coverage. We'll be breaking it down all the way up and through the NBA trade deadline today, though. We got some intel. Just a little windy moment. The first one of the year, right? Fingers pointing up in the air. Some genius statements coming after it. Windy is on the ball already. He doesn't sleep. And we're going to break down what he had to say today. Maybe talk about how. The Sixers could proceed at this trade deadline. And also Nick Nurse has me so positive, so optimistic, fired up because the Sixers actually have a coach, a coach. We'll talk about all of it. But before we get into that, a shout out to our sponsor of today's show and our title sponsor, proud partner here, Philly Tick with RB. It is BetUS. You know, they're known for their reliability, their security, their excellent customer service. But right now, They are having one of the biggest promotions, biggest contest giveaways. If you are interested in taking a trip out to Vegas for the big game, that's right, the Super Bowl, they are doing an open contest right now. All you have to do, using BetUS, place a bet on any NFL line and share your slip on Twitter. Tag the BetUS official account and the person you'll be bringing along with you and use the hashtag BetUSLVII. Also, as always, you can go down to the description and get a 125% sign-up bonus using my link. Go to BetUS. They have great customer service, 24-7 and 24-hour payouts. But BetUS is doing one of the biggest things I've ever seen right now. If you want to go to the Super Bowl, go check it out, man, and shout out to BetUS. All right, let's jump into it. So I want to start off with Nick Nurse and practice today. I I want to get going in the positive light. And man, I'm just I'm just so happy. I'm so happy. As you guys know, I met Nick Nurse. I interviewed him and talked to him on Out the Mud with B Ball Paul. Check that episode out if you have not yet. But even getting to talk to him, man, he's just such a good dude and he knows the game. He knows the game. And for once, the 76ers do not have a coach that is going to lay down and make excuses for losing games. Right? Sure, guys are injured and guys are tired and back to backs. Shoot, we've said that ourselves. Nick Nurse is going to hold these players to a grand standard. He's going to hold them to high expectations because when you get to the playoffs, it does not matter. All those excuses, everything you have to say goes out the window. It's about who wins and who loses. Anyway, Nick Nurse today after practice said that Joel Embiid did not practice. There's hope he will be able to tomorrow. We'll see if he bounces back still dealing with that ankle. Today's practice was also like a training camp style of practice. Nick Nurse said it after the game on Saturday. We're going to get physical. We're going to get in there and get our hands dirty because the level of effort was unacceptable the last two games despite the circumstances. And lastly, he refuses to use injuries as an excuse. He did not like the team's effort in the last two games. And I want to take it to an article from Noah Levick of NBC Sports Philly who elaborates who got to talk to Nick Nurse today. And here's a couple of the quotes. And I just, I'm so thrilled that the Sixers finally have a coach like this. It's what we've all been asking for for many years. Quote, we had a training camp style practice, competition and all that kind of stuff. And I think there were bits of everything to prioritize from transition defense to guarding the ball to shot challenges. So we started on it. Goes on to talk about the team uh, and, you know, the practice and the situation. Nick also said this, quote, You're certainly going to have ups and downs over any season. That is true, right? You're not going to win 82 games. There's going to be good stretches, losing streaks. It happens. But, quote, obviously the easy way out is to say we're beat up and we don't have enough people and all that kind of stuff. But I can't accept that as the coach. Thank you. Thank you. You hear that, Doc? You hear that? No scheduled losses. No scheduled losses. Oh, it just wasn't our night. We weren't going to win anyway. No, no. There is a way we want to play regardless of who is out there. And that's what I've got to make sure to do. Man, 
Nick Nurse is going to change the culture in Philly. It's only a matter of time. He already has done it, but I'm talking about getting to the big stage. Nick Nurse is going to be that type of guy. That's why his teams win everywhere he goes, overseas, U.S., doesn't matter. They win because this is how you coach a team. Let's also talk about what Nick Nurse had to say. Quote, whatever it is, I don't accept the effort. I don't accept the lack of defense and transition, the lack of shot challenges and all that. I can accept shots not going in. I think it all works together regardless of whether the ball's going in or not. You have to be able to put some type of play together that you're going to be consistent with and some type of fight that you're going to be consistent with. Give, I mean, this is amazing, man. It is poetry to my ears. Poetry. Poetry. This is poetic. And, and you're probably looking at it saying, why is he overreacting? Because the Sixers haven't had a coach like this. This is 2002. Honestly, man, this is what we need. Just some accountability, just a little bit. You guys keep asking me where I'm at, and I'm saying 60%. What's holding me up is that some of our foundational stuff has gotten rocked here a bit. We've got to get that foundation solidified. And again, that's basic stuff with getting back, guarding the ball, challenging shots. I say this all the time. The regular season is about finding your identity, establishing who you are as a team, and Nick Nurse gets it, man. So shout out to Nick Nurse. He is right on the ball with this one. The other thing I want to talk about here today is Brian Windhorse. Because this is what Brian Windhorse said earlier today. And as you know, as we started off the show by saying, we're one month away. Things are about to heat up. The Sixers are going to be involved in all these trade talks. I can't wait. It's going to be an absolute fiesta. Hopefully they make a big move. But Brian Windhorse said this, quote, the only contender in the top three of the standings that I can confidently forecast will be aggressive is Philadelphia. It can make multiple deals. The Sixers have assets for once. They have some flexibility. They have preached waiting to the end of the season, you know, and, and having these big contracts that expire and only having three guaranteed contracts on the roster, et cetera, et cetera. Fact of the matter is, if you believe the Sixers can compete right now, you need to use these assets that you acquired in the James Harden trade and go out and make a deal. Sixers are good. They've built up great chemistry. They have established a foundation this year. Nick Nurse has done a great job, but chemistry can only take you so far. We've seen in some of these past couple games, we've seen at certain points through the year, yeah, they're good, but Boston and Milwaukee are coming, and we knew that to start the year. I'm not saying I'm fearful of them. It would be a good series, but if the Sixers really want to get over the top, they're going to need another piece. I've proposed Larry Markin, and I, I love his game. We saw it front row the other night. But sure, right, he might not get traded. There's other targets. There's other pieces. Fact of the matter is this can't be, you know, a Glenn Robinson the third kind of deadline. This can't be a Jalen McDaniels kind of deadline. You need to go out there and make a statement. And Daryl Morey loves trading his stars. You know that. He loves trading big piece for big piece. Could we potentially see, say, a Tobias Harris trade? Here's the NBA standings right now. Sixers are third, a little bit behind the Bucks and the Celtics, just as I expected. This is where I expected them to be, maybe even a bit lower. I think they've overachieved so far. And sure, some of these losses have been due to injuries and guys not being there. Not trying to make excuses, but when you look at the team as a total, yes, they need more help. But I don't think they're that far off. And I think that's how Maury needs to go into this. He said, I'm not rushing to make a trade. But if the right piece is there, right, if Levine becomes available, Mark and whoever it is, expect the Sixers to be up there in all the conversations. That is what Brian Windhorst is saying. And we trust Windy with our lives right now. The Windy meme, fingers pointing up. I mean, he's been dead on the last couple deadlines, if I'm being honest. Like, usually what he says comes to fruition. Sixers are going to be right there. He didn't say any other teams. He said the Sixers are the one team that pops in his head that are going to be on the ball during this trade deadline. And just to kind of wrap it up in terms of what I feel they need, I think they need a Tobias Harris replacement. I've said this all along. They need a guy who's just a little bit of a better rebounder, can shoot consistently, defend, create that kind of hybrid role. And they need someone with a defined skill or skill set that's going to come in and impact the game. When Tobias Harris is in there, and he's the third or fourth option, and he doesn't have the ball in his hands, what else does he do to make his impact the last thing on a game? He doesn't go out there and defend the other team's best player. He doesn't go out there and grab 12 rebounds. He's just there, right? Sixers need a guy who's going to step up and be that impact player. 
And I also have said this in recent weeks. I still believe it. They need a lockdown defender. Nothing against DeAnthony Melton. I think he's a good player. But who's going to go out there and defend Jason Tatum in the playoffs? Who's going to defend Giannis? Who's going to defend some of these players? Boston is stacked, okay? You need lockdown defenders. I think the Sixers have gotten a lot better this year. I think they have great role players, guys that fit. But, you know, your sixth, seventh, eighth man, you get to the playoffs, they have to be automatic. You have to trust and believe going in. Okay, we got a guy, right? Like a Jordan Clarkson. He's coming into the playoffs and he's putting up 15 off the bench. We know that. Can we say that about Marcus Morris or Robert Covington? Do we know that right now? I can't say that's a positive. So, look, man, the Sixers have players that are playing well. They want to get over the top. And at this point, man, you got to cash in, push the chips into the middle of the table and say, I'm all in and do what it takes to make this team ready right now. And according to sources, Sixers are going to be locked in looking to make a move. So we'll see how it plays out, man. I am pumped up for this trade deadline. Give me your thoughts down below. How do you feel about this team right now? Appreciate everybody tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. That being said, I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.